All right, guys, before we get started, a big thank you to our partner, Microsoft Windows 11, the official operating system of the NFL and the exclusive sponsor of the LA Chargers. The all new Windows 11, they're here to bring you closer to what you love, like the Chargers and the final drive. Learn about all the awesome new features of Windows 11 at windows.com. And welcome into a week six edition of the final drive. Chargers lose 34 to six in Baltimore, joined by Haley Elwood. And simply put, Haley, this just was not the Chargers day in all three phases. It really wasn't. I mean, like you said, in all three phases, every single person who spoke at the podium from Brandon Staley to Herbert to Kaiser White to Derwin, they all said, look, we got outplayed and outcoached today. It really felt like, I mean, and it, it was, it was one of those games where I, I don't want to say the Chargers weren't really in it, but they weren't, you know, they just, they couldn't really get something done on defense offensively. It was not what we were used to seeing with this offense over the last few weeks, even in that loss to Dallas. I mean, they still were able to get something going. Um, it was just a, a, you know, virtually a shutout. They didn't score since after the second quarter. And, and it was a tough one, but a tough one that, that leaves you four and two. You know, you're four and two yeah. as you enter the bye. And if there are positives to take away from it, it's that you're two games above 500. That's right. And I think we're just, we're unaccustomed to seeing the ver this version of the Chargers not be in a game. E even in their loss to Dallas, they were in that. And, and some people think they should have won that game. So this one, just from the jump, I mean, Lamar Jackson has been playing incredible. And he was just, he was comfortable all day long uh, in, in terms of, rushing yards I think it was 187 to 26 um the the Ravens kind of had their way on the ground and the Chargers really they couldn't get anything going offensively and you know last week Haley we were we we're sitting next to each other watching the Browns game and you know the offense responded every single drive they responded when the defense was down they started slow out of the gate and it's just it's really tough to recover when one phase of the ball just isn't clicking, um, all three phases weren't clicking early on throughout the entire game. Yep. Brandon Staley said the Ravens beat us in all three phases. And, you know, I, I was kind of reflecting back on my conversation that I had with NFL Network's Aditi Kinkabwala this past week, just kind of previewing this game. And she talked a lot about how uh, Don Martindale, Wink Martindale from the Ravens, their defensive coordinator, he likes to throw a lot at you and a lot of different looks. And that was one thing that Justin Herbert said after the game that, they saw a lot of different things that they hadn't seen on tape throughout the week and they couldn't adjust to them. And he said, look, the learning experience is you take a game like this and you learn how to adjust and you learn from it. But I thought that that was really interesting um, because she had previewed that they like to kind of throw a lot out to you, you know, very similar, I think, to what we have heard from this Chargers defense too, different looks, disguising, things of that sort. But I thought Herbert's line after the game was really interesting in the fact that they saw a lot that they hadn't seen and really studied for, and they couldn't really adjust to it. But he said, like I mentioned earlier, it's a learning experience and you take a game like this, you kind of stick it in your hat and you move on. And I think that's what you have to do. If you're the Chargers. you don't get too high and too low after each loss. And this one feels bad in the moment because just the score was bad. The fourth down magic kind of ran out today mm -hmm. in terms of the conversions over two on fourth down. Uh, going into, I think, their third, fourth down of the game. They only get six points. The Ravens only get six points off those fourth down uh, conversions that were not converted. Um, but, you know, just a, a lot of things just didn't go their way. We're not used to seeing Justin Herbert have trouble. Um, 22 of 39, 195 yards, touchdown, interception. He was the leading rusher, too, uh, two for 12. And, and that's something that I think Haley needs to change coming into that Patriots game out of the bye they have to find their identity identity in terms of rushing the football because you, you can't get out possessed the way they were out possessed right. today. Yeah. I, I was kind of laughing when you mentioned you can't get too high or too low because Derwin after the game said, look, the world is not over. <laughs> and I thought it's, that it's not, it's not, you know, it's not, but I thought that that was a really good way of putting it. Yeah. Things we're also not used to seeing with this chargers team three of 12, Chargers offense, I should say three of 12 on third down and the time of possession, like you said, getting out possessed 38 minutes to 21. And that was a huge difference in terms of just how this game ended up playing out. Look, you, you know, you had some good to take away. Like I kind of looking back in my notes, 
specifically the end of that second quarter where the Ravens get the ball back with just a minute left. And then you have those two sacks and incomplete pass, which really prevented points at that. You know, it wasn't a, a swing at that point because they did end up scoring when they came out of halftime, but yeah, there were things that you just didn't see. And when you talk about kind of shoring up the run game, I think that's a huge part of it because the Ravens essentially made the chargers one dimensional, but even that passing element, that dimension couldn't, it wasn't working today. It just wasn't, you know, of being effective in any sense. And Jared cook, the only guy with a, a touchdown Keenan led the chargers. I believe his, uh, led the chargers receivers five for five for 50. But again, those aren't the numbers that we're used to seeing, especially with someone like Keenan Allen. So, you know, there's just a lot to kind of learn from. And, and it's again, extremely early on in the season. And I think you'd rather have a game like this happen early. I also think back to our conversation with Daniel Popper that we had last week where he said, look, if you can be at the buy at four and two with the competition that this team has faced, that's a win. That's a really, really big win. And I've seen a lot of chargers fans on Twitter after this game express those same sentiments that, okay, yeah, this one kind of sucked and this one stung, but at the same time being four and two and entering your buy right now is a pretty good place to be, especially in your own division too. Yeah. Two and on the division There's 17 games, man. I mean, yeah, that's, so that's a lot of, it's a lot of games. And, you know, I felt like the defense was coming around a little bit at the end of that first half. With Kaiser White gets that interception. Uh, you thought that maybe there the Chargers offense could get going a little bit and this game gets competitive. And then the beginning of that second half, I mean, Baltimore drives all the way down the field, kind of takes the wind out of your sails. And, and I'll say this, there's so many guys on defense this team needs to get back. Yeah. Justin Jones, Kenneth Murray, uh, Drew Tranquil. Um I think when those guys get back, couple that with a lot of these young guys playing and, and getting some experience early on in the year, maybe that helps uh, this defense moving forward. But I think you have to look at this game in a vacuum because it, the, this stretch that they've had, I mean, you go on the road, Washington it loses to the Chiefs today, but you know they have a pretty good defense and coming in, they were a playoff team, as, as Staley mentioned. You beat the Chiefs on the road. You beat the Raiders on Monday night, and you beat the Browns in that <laughs> track week. meet that Staley called. You know, I, I feel like the last three weeks have been kind of exhausting for this team too. To, to win in Arrowhead, then have a Monday night game, short week, beat the Browns, then you got to come west to east and and try to beat a really good Ravens team. It's a, it's a tall task. It is a tall task, and and going East at essentially what is a, a 10 AM game Pacific time. You know, you're also dealing with the time change too of, of playing much earlier, I think mentally than that you would prepare yourself that you'd normally play out West. But yeah, I think like you mentioned, being two and zero in division within those games is really, really huge. And it, it, it just kind of is what it is right now, but, it, but in a good way of the fact that, like we said, you're two games above 500. There is a lot of season left. You are going to get guys back. I mean, I think it was a, a Kaiser was asked about, you know, getting guys like Justin Jones and, and Kenneth and drew back. And he said, yeah, it's going to be huge. And we're looking forward to it. Just fortifying that group specifically is going to be really, really big. And these guys also mentioned, you know, we we're just kind of going to focus on cleaning up some of the little things, you know, just some of those fine tuning things. Kaiser had said, look, we know we're still a good team. It's just time to clean it up and get ready for New England, which is the team that's coming into SoFi after the bye. Haley, you think the bye came at a good time? I, I yeah. just, I, I think the, the stretch of tough games at the beginning of the year to, to win four of six and you have key injuries, you almost want to, if you do have a bye, like have it come off a loss where you have some stuff to take from as opposed to like being scorching hot going into a bye and kind of losing momentum. I almost yeah. feel like this is a good reset right now. I agree with that. I laugh because Joey Bosa had said earlier last week. Yeah. Like when, you know, of course the buy is coming at a good time because you want the time off, but then you think, Oh shoot, there are 11 games still, <laughs> still left to be played in a <laughs> row after this, but look at the specifics, right? Look at the specifics of where this buy is hitting this team. And we just touched on it. Having, you know, guys who have been out 
being able to maybe even this week kind of sneaks in as like an extra week for them to get healthy. When we come back, we do know that obviously Justin and Kenneth, I believe, will be able to return from IR and hopefully they're healthy enough to do so. But it's kind of nice that the buy sort of sneaks in here because you get that sort of bonus. Whatever is going on with Drew Tranquil, again, he gets that kind of extra week just to rest and recover and, and get his body right. And anyone else who might have made it through this game. But I think because of that and those specifics with this Chargers team, I do think it's coming at a really, really good time. No Nas Adderley in this yeah, game either. Another one. You mentioned some of the numbers offensively. Keenan, you know, he only had five targets, like you said. I mean, <laughs> five for 50, Eckler four for 48, Mike Williams two for 27. We weren't sure what his status was going to be coming mm-hmm. into this one. So it was just kind of a, a an offensive performance we weren't used to seeing. Maybe we've just been really spoiled, too, at the same time, because you, you look at this three-game sample size for, for Justin Herbert, you know, 12 total touchdowns, he doesn't turn the ball over. Um, it's, it's hard to expect that. I, I feel like because he's had so many great performances, you do expect it every week, but this is kind of a reminder that, Hey, this is the NFL. The Ravens are a really good team, really well coached by John Harbaugh and company. And uh, I think we talked about this last last week. They're like 13 and one on a short week, which is remarkable. Yeah. Um, so th- this team has been together for a long time. Um, John Harbaugh has been the coach there for a long time and, and they were ready to go. Yeah, they were. I mean, Brandon Staley said they had a really, really good game plan that the Ravens came in with just a really, really good game plan where early in the game, the chargers weren't, he said, we weren't able to get on schedule. And he credits a lot of that to Baltimore and what they were able to do in this game. When it comes to Keenan, he said, yeah, of course, there's a plan to get the ball to Keenan, but whether it was coverage or pressures, it didn't go that way today. And so obviously you kind of pick it up, you move on. Maybe this is sort of one of its kind, but I think your point too, I think we might've been a little spoiled with this offense because I I even talked about it with Aditi. She goes, okay, you know, you take Mike Williams and Keenan away. And we saw this in the Raiders game. You know, you saw Jared cook have a big game. You saw Donald Parham had a, you know, have a big game at that time, get those tight ends involved, but no one was really on the same page today and holding Justin Herbert to under 200 yards is, is huge by that Baltimore defense to do that. So they were just like, again, it just goes back to, to what everyone said. They were sort of just out coached and, and out game planned and outplayed today. And you learn from it. You know, th- some things need to improve. The, the, the run defense is going to have to improve um, coming out of the bye with New England on deck. Uh, you know, special teams, Tristan Viscano missed his fifth extra point. Yeah. That's got to be better. Um, Coach Staley acknowledged that. Uh, so there's little things this is far from a finished product in terms of season. And you have these ups and downs. We we've been there before through teams, even teams that were like 12 and four, remember that the 2018 team Haley, like they started one and two, right. And then they went on that roll. So you're going to have like the ebbs and flows of a season plus an extra game. Uh, What do you think they need to do coming into new England? I mean, this is another AFC game. They're they're kind of stacking these wins in the AFC, obviously you drop this one, but just continue to win in the conference and the division. Yeah, that's obviously what's most important. And, and I kind of go back to what the, the terminology that Pat Kerwin from CBS and Sirius XM NFL radio calls these specifically, let's look at Cleveland and Baltimore wildcard games. You know, these are sort of the AFC games in conference that might affect standing at the end of the year. And, and the chargers are obviously in a good place for that right now. There still is a lot of season to be played, but yeah, coming into new England. I mean, look, I, I know that they're playing right now as, as you and I are recording this, I think I saw Hunter Henry had his third touchdown today and as many or three, he's had three touchdowns in three straight games, which is the first time I believe he's done that in three consecutive games since his rookie season, he's clearly becoming a factor. So I think it's obviously it's, it's shoring up that run defense and Staley said it's, you know, and, and also getting your own run game going to which Brandon Staley said today that, that the chargers or I'm sorry, in regards to the chargers run game, Baltimore was just more physical. It's being more physical, which also, again, probably gets parlayed into getting some of those key defensive players up front back as well. Yeah. And then, you know, the running game from the chargers perspective, they got to get something out of Roundtree Kelly and Jackson mm-hmm. to compliment Austin. You know, we know Austin can kind of do it all. Um, you know, and that, that starts with the offensive line. It, it's, it's really everybody. It's the entire operation. 
because I, I look at this time of possession, and I think that's probably the most concerning thing. You, you have your defense out there for so long, down key guys. Uh, we mentioned Nas being out today, too. Um, it's really difficult, man. I mean, it, it's it's hard to be on the field for almost 40 minutes, down key players, and the Ravens just kind of gassing you with, with the running game. Um, you know, and it's a it's a it, it I guess it shows how solid they are in the running game. They are down Gus Edwards and Dobbins. They bring in Le'Veon Bell, who's wearing number 17, which <laughs> confused me all game. I was like, I, I'm thinking Le'Veon Bell's a wide receiver. Uh, Devontae Freeman, Latavius Murray. So they have like these these older backs that are just really effective, just coming into their program so early. So again, it's it's hats off to, to Baltimore in, in their offense. Greg Roman. Yeah, and hats off to Lamar Jackson too. I mean, he had a couple scrambles that honestly, you just- He's amazing. You get the defense on your on their skates, like because this guy, you know, he might have been running around and it might have only ended up being like a three yard gain, but he's running for seconds, like multiple, multiple seconds of just getting guys off their spots and then eventually getting a little something out of it. It's so funny. I was watching this game and I'm like, man, this running back stable they have is like everyone's fantasy running backs from like five years ago, like studs that were all on fantasy teams, <laughs> yeah. but they were effective. They made it, they made it certainly, certainly work. And that was another thing that I, I spoke with Aditi about was, okay, so you saw the Ravens come back this past Monday against the Colts through the air. And then she goes, Hmm, I wonder because this chargers run defense hasn't been so great. Will they go back to the ground? And they did that today. So it just goes, it just goes back to game planning, you know, and, and a lot of teams have clunkers like this, you know, some every, it almost feels like every team a season has a game where they just get essentially blown out to use that phrase. And, and you pick it up and you move on from there. And like we said, it's, it's early enough that as Derwin mentioned, the world is not over. The sky is not falling, but you learn from it. It's just a process that you learn from. I think the way it shook out to the score was bad, but you know, when you're going for it on fourth down, it's your own 19 and your own yeah. 39 yard line, you're trying to find ways to get back into the game. So, you know, hats off for, for being aggressive in an effort to try and to, to get back in the game. And I think if these two teams meet again, the chargers have a pretty good idea of where they stand and what they need to do to improve. Absolutely. Absolutely. I would say that that's, that's certainly the the case. And I think of Justin Herbert too, and how he keeps a, like a notebook on, on every team and said, you know, his Baltimore slate was clean this week, but he's got notes in there right now. It'll be chock full of notes now, right? Chock full of notes. Yep. All right, Haley, let's uh, let's move on. Let's have a bye. We're off next week. Um, we'll be back after the Chargers take on the Patriots. You mentioned it, Hunter Henry coming back to Los Angeles. Bill Belichick, Mac Jones should be a good one, but you'll take four and two. Chargers four and two. Got a week off. We'll be back at it in a couple of weeks. For Haley Elwood, I'm Chris Harey. This has been the final drive presented by Microsoft Windows 11.